locally we're trying to hide from the mosquito this chicken gongo thing they on the island in near epidemic proportions this mosquito where I one woman in the radio program said was is machine made <laughs> she said this mosquito do natural to the work by what by night and not by day uh, kind of things going on and what you really exposing here on the island is our zero health system and our knee jerk reaction to health situations in a country where in drains have to be clean regularly where the people them can have a kind of nasty behavior generally where the people expect the government to do all these things and do these things where the children are not trained to put things in the rubbish pan where there's a feeling that if you're not if your government is not in power you have a right to destroy the property and the land because i know you in charge it's a kind of mentality driven by the party tribalists tribalism here on this island so there's no real concern until it reach you so our country is divided along the line of party you know so it's a party first mentality run jamaica so there's no concern for other jamaican people if they're not in your party so the people the conditions become seriously poor for everybody in season and out of season in other words, you suffer when your party is out of power. And you suffer when your party is also in power. Because generally, everything is at a mediocrity. One of the ways to transform this island tribal politics is a revolution required in our thinking. And the revolution is not necessarily about the shooting of guns and the dropping of bombs. It is a revolution to reprogram the, me the, me the methods and the way in which the country is governed. We have been locked into what is called a central government from the days of the British. And our island is so complex and complicated now that it can no longer be governed from one central spot. This is a reality that many people are unwilling to face. But subconsciously, they know it. The country can no longer be governed from Kingston. There are too many difficulties in Trelawney. Too many difficulties in St. Mary. Roads, toilet, pit situation, schools. There are too many basic details that the central government cannot address. So the revolution in organization, I am suggesting means that we have more regional authority. We give more political power to the region, into the northeast, into the south central, into the west, and the already Kingston and St. Andrew that exist. Northeast Jamaica need to have a whole set of leadership, governance that governs the four parishes. That there's concentration by the governance here on just these four parishes. The same thing would happen in Western Jamaica, South Central, and Kingston and St. Andrew. There can be not enough attention from the centre to a place like Moko in Clarendon, to a place like Balcadre is up in the Buff Bay Valley. We have to reconstruct governance into regional governance. Yeah, we need regions, regions that have a certain level of semi-autonomy. The taxation is spent in those regions. You see the new commissioner of police? I'm going to make a recommendation to the new commissioner. Think about the motto that the police force is using. And reverse that motto. The first thing cannot be about serving and then protect and then to reassure. We want you to reassure the people first. And then we want to begin to serve not the ruling class, but to serve the population. And I want to make a suggestion now to the governance to cut down on this law 
this violence. If each region and the football has a framework for confederations, each confederation should have a commission of police. So we have four commissioners of police, and then we have a national commissioner. So you see, each commissioner now would concentrate on policing his confederation. So you have a Northeast Confederation Commissioner, St. Thomas, Portland, St. Mary, and St. Anne's. Those are the four parishes that that commissioner must concentrate on reducing crime and violence. Same thing for the police force in those confederations. And perhaps if we decentralize the police force, in the same way I'm suggesting we decentralize the government, we get a better attention to details and basic problems. Yeah, man, a commissioner of police for Northeast Jamaica. He must rule from St. Mary to St. Thomas. And that is his area of jurisdiction. His area to make sure that crime is low. Hey, this could be a different place. Oh, please, don't you rock my boat. Because I don't want my boat to be rocking. Oh, please, don't you rock my boat. Because I don't want my boat to be rocking. I'm telling you that, oh. into the month of September, which is the month of football. Internationally, all the leagues have kicked off. We are now in the cycle of a new World Cup that will come unfold in 2018. So the cycle has just begun. La Liga, Spanish League is on. Bundesliga, German League, EPL, English Premier League, RSPL, Red Stripe Premier League, Manning Cup Football, the Costa Cup, Schoolboy Football. The whole atmosphere now is about the big ball. 
Of course, the English Premier League has seen a lot in Jamaica. And high money spending, transfer window, team have been rebuilt and reconditioned. Millions and millions and millions upon dollars being spent on these players. And of course, they, a lot of people are paying attention to the reform, the reconditioned Manchester United under a new coach who seems to have been able to just about to put enough fun together to get a team of his liking. So we see the importance of money in attracting the best players and the best talent in any field you're looking at. Now, the football now is as it is internationally. It's an industry. It's a business. In the same way in Jamaica, the racehorse is an industry. Horse racing is an industry. It's the same way football is an industry in the European and South American and First World nations. We're having great, great difficulties here on this island with this international game. We had a glimpse at success in 1998 when the reggae boys qualified for France. We had all the support of the world to help to bring this team to the front. The team didn't really get to the World Cup on its own building blocks. Rene Simoes, who at the time was the national technical director, our coach, did declare that this was the first team he had to work with that was being built from the top down. Top down development is specific just to Jamaica and the reggae boys. And because the reggae boys were successful in that four year top down building process, the administrators from then have seemed to believe that that is the way forward. That you keep trying to build the team from the top down every four years. Where the results have been very obvious from 2000. 2000, 2004, 2008, 2012. The reggae boys have not qualified for the World Cup qualification round since 2002. When the team qualified for France, we got our highest ranking in FIFA. We were ranked in the top 30. 31, I think, was our historically the highest we have ever been ranked in the world. 31 in 1998. In 2014, Jamaica ranks 100. Yeah, 100. Where Jamaica ranks now means our players are no longer eligible for English contracts. Because your team have to be ranking in the top 75, I think, to be looked at. So there's a total dissol dissolution now of the hopes of the national players getting into a club team abroad. There are no more, the hopes have been dashed because the rankings are outside what is looked at. The other reality to Jamaican football is the German coach, Schaefer. Schaefer's record with the Jamaican team since his arrival has been close to dismal. The team has won two out of about 20 games. And the only two games that the Jamaica team has won are two little Caribbean teams that were just pick-up teams to give us a run. The national team has yet to beat anybody outside of the Caribbean. So the coach is talking about looking at players, but you don't want to look at players and keep getting beaten because there needs to be some inspiration. The country needs to feel inspired. There is no inspiration from the team. Constant beatings. The eight love against France was a wake-up that nobody wanted to wake up to. 3-1 against Canada recently showed that our team really can't play beyond 60 minutes. There's a game coming up against Japan. Probably get a four loved in that one. But most important is the football tournament against the Caribbean teams on the horizon. This is a tournament that will determine whether Schaefer stays or Schaefer goes. The president is claiming that Jamaica must win this. We are not only involved in the Caribbean tournament, we are the hosts. 
And Borrell feels that if we are hosting this tournament and we can't win it, then we're really not going anywhere. The coach, on the other hand, has made a remark that Brazil hosted the World Cup and they did not win. Now, this is a high level of deceptive reasoning because Brazil was hosting a world-class final tournament. The Caribbean tournament is a mini tournament. So if we can't win that, then have a shape of beer. on the foundation of Jamaican football has, has always been our schoolboy players. Our schoolboy players now have been disconnected from the national program because the players that are being recruited are not coming from the lower levels but are coming from outside the country. So our national schoolboys no longer visualizing themselves playing for Jamaica. So their route now, if they want to really progress, they have to go the college route. They have to take it to the MLS. Because the national team is not an outlet anymore for our younger players. This national coach that we have, obviously, is not a technical director. He's a national coach. So the country's football is still without a technical director. The schoolboy program, of course, is... The best football in the country. I understand that they're trying to introduce another cup here. And all of this is happening in the same four months. We are actually treating our schoolboy players like our professionals are treated. Some of these players are playing three matches a week. Players in the English Premier League hardly ever play three games a week. We have everything inverted. So our school leagues are operating like professionals. And our professional, our Premier League is pretending to be professional. But I made an observation. Part of the weakness of the Premier League is that the players seem to be unable to play two matches a week at the same pace and the same intensity. They lack the conditioning, they lack the nutrition, they lack the infrastructure to play two matches, Wednesday and Sunday, at the same level of intensity. I find that the players are unable to do it, and so the standard is not consistent. We're not a professional country. We're not a professional team. We're not a professional league. Let us call it semi-pro and done. But let us clear the hypocrisy from schoolboy football. Because in reality, that is our professional football. Media coverage. Preparation. Money. But we are living in a lot of deception. We're living in a lot of illusions. We don't want to face a reality. We are an amateur country. We should concentrate on Olympics. Yes, let us turn our schoolboy footballers into Olympic ballers. 
and then they will find their way to the international arena. These two songs here now is towards one of our fallen heroes, the great Hopeton Lewis. Take a time, no need to hurry. Take it easy, take it easy, take it easy. No need to hurry. No slipping, no sliding, no bumping, no boring. I want to ride into town. If you fall from the race, it's no disgrace. Just be Yeah, we have to re-energize ourselves through organization and name change. Yeah, man, we have to the, net, the Negro out of the UNIA. And we're inserting the African, we're resurrecting the African community leagues. And we want a global, universal African Improvement Association. We're all Africans. Particularly in this globalized era, information is moving rapidly. All youths of this time understand Africa. We don't know what Negro is. So make us rally the global cry that all Africans can rally around this garbage framework, Universal African Improvement Association. Yes, I. Brother Hopeton Lewis, the man is key members of the upliftment and the making of this thing called reggae music. Yeah, man, Hopeton Lewis. Taking our one carefully, no. Taking our one carefully, yeah. Walked on Lewis. Long time man I sing about the cushion pen, you know. Long time. Yeah man, the man have no locks on them head, you know. But the man there is a Rasta man, Afrocentric, and overstand the power of the Kali. No, no. Don't take it so hard, my
So far, I always have to be given its big ups in these times. Rastafari must be given its praise and its credit for keeping the blackness shining while we're being overpowered by white images, white supremacist ideologies. Rastafari maintained the African centeredness and that consciousness that is no reawakening reborn african consciousness males and females man i also want to use this opportunity to invite the portland the community to this first meeting of the world federation community group the ethiopian world federation community group in the Port Antonio community is holding its first meeting at the Port Antonio Primary School. This is at Carter Park, Carter Park School. This will be on Sunday, 21st of September 2014, starting at 5 p.m. All are invited. Come, make yourself a registered member. Bring your ideas, bring your thoughts that could be put together for the creation of a better community. So, people in Port Antonio, you're invited to the first World Ethiopian World Federation community group meeting. Sunday, 21st, 5 p.m., Carter Park, Port Antonio Primary School. Yeah, man, we want the unification in small groups. There don't have to be no 100 million men gathered together. Groups of fives and fours. And those are groups that become functional. Somehow the bigger the group is, the less work it does. So form a group of three. Form a peer. Start with yourself. Liberation. <laughs> Rastafari is the spiritual, Gavi is the political and the economic. That is the vehicle we need to move in now. United Africans Improvement Association and African Community Leagues. Yes, that is the forward way in this time.
Renaissance of Garveyism. We need a renaissance in this time. Yeah, man, we have to have something where we can all rally behind when these white forces set off them self destructive weapons of destruction. We can't hide behind them. We have to organize within I and I. African rally around the African identity, universal African identity. Universal African improvement. All Africans need improvement. We need it universally. We don't know what a Negro thing means anymore. We have outgrown the Negro. And we are ready to stand up as Africans. Yes, in the land of the rising sun. That's where we are. The only thing that a gambler needs is a suitcase and a trunk the only time that he is satisfied is when he's on a drunk so mama please tell your children to do what I've done Stay away from the house in New Orleans They call the rising sun struggle now and the unity must come around economic issues so Rastafari Maroons Ganja Farmers we need a unity around economics yeah man there is a lands controlled by the Maroons there's a Ganja Farmers who have the interest in growing Ganja and there's Rastafari who cutting and clearing the way we need a forum perhaps it's the Rastafari University of Higher Life Learning that we'll have to call this forum this meeting of the an assembly of minds that will lead towards an economic framework. Yes, ganja lands, medicinal ganja, and of course the important hemp industry. So Rastafarians and Maroons, yeah man, all African people, that's all that's a critical thing, you know. The Rasta is an African and the Marooned is an African. So why can't the Africans unite for economic liberation? Yeah man, that's part of the black liberation struggle. Yeah, we need some coalitions amongst African people, some African coalitions right here in Jamaica. Yes, the Maroons who have been given the feeling as though they are not Africans, and the Rastas who are insisting that they are Africans, and the Afrocentric people who are not Rastas, have to see the importance of economic unification around the ganja, hemp, 
for industrialization. Cannabis smoking for pharmaceutical reasons. We need land, manufacturing, change the, medi change the meditation. <laughs> I'm sending love to all my friends and rivals, associates, even my enemies. Peace and prosperity to all ones and ones who are listening to the Metamorphosis, whether in North America, South America, Africa, Europe, or Asia, or Australia. Especially to anybody who's living in the tri seat area. Heal up to my night nurse. Yes. Every time. To see say poverty no real then is what the reason they reveal it. Who knows? Who knows? Who knows? Who knows? I just go as a trade wind blows, sending love to my friends and foes, and I support. Metamorphosis, metamorphosis, metamorphosis. I 
Yeah, Metamorphosis coming down to another close out for another edition. Trying to drive away the demons that are occupying the brains of the black people. Guys, it's our brains, you know. It's the brain that our problems rest. Crisscross and deceptive ideas locked into the binary of left side and right side. Totally overlooking the middle. There are really three forces that govern everything, you know. Three forces, basically. There is good and there is evil. And there is indifference. Indifference is a mighty power. There is forward and there is backward. There is also neutral. Neutral is as an important power. So we look into the powers of the Trinity. The tribe apartheid forces of our brain. Left brain, right brain, and the middle brain. Make a reconnect with the pineal gland. That opens the consciousness. That gives us a perception of that invisible black dot at the center of consciousness. Yes, reaching into and down to the eye. Yeah, metamorphosis is rolling out. And it's not just about the eye now in its singularity. Rastaman speaks about the eye and eye. And the eye and eye now speaks to the collective. The collective eye. So there's the eye within. And there's the eye and eye. Collectively. African race. The black race. Rastafara. Are you ready for it? Are you ready for it? Are you ready for some roots? Spanish town, Buff Bay, St. Thomas, Bronx, New York. California, UK, down under. Peace, people. If you can't be good, be the best. I man, say that. This is Styles FM 96.1 on your FM dial.